Hey there guys, welcome to the channel today. We are doing a short video on one character, one character alone, that is BB-8. So how to use BB-8. Firstly, unlocking him, very easy journey guide, old fashioned event, uh, all his gear is doubled, pretty much except for the carry tax on the very last finisher piece of gear 12, but otherwise completely easy to get up there. You're gonna be doing a second ability uh, called a data transfer most of all, where he kind of wiggle wiggles on the space. That gives his buff secret intel to another character, plus give himself a terminator, Plus, which is the cooldown of an American Destiny, which is his full cleanse, his full heal, his full explosion in the team, his all the buffs, team reader up, speed up, offense up, um, I forget, there's a critical damage up and critical chance up, and use a soul. His two Zetas, Roll with the Punches and Self Preservation Protocol, they're both kind of important, but Roll with the Punches is less important. It gives you counter attack 80% of the time, which is kind of nice. You get an assist from a resistance character, that's kind of nice if you're using the resistance team in particular, but you don't have to. As we're going to see in a second. Self preservation protocol, much more useful. Half the time he gets hit, he then gets foresight, which means he'll avoid the next attack. He gets 10 meter at the start of the fight relative to 8% uh, 10 meter per droid. So if you have lots of droids in your team, he starts faster. And every time he dodges the attack, he heals for 8% health and 8% protection. There's a lot of 8% in this kit. I do not know why. I guess BBA, but right? there we go. I guess I know why now. But he has a lot of 8% in his kit, so there you go. But he gets 10 meter for droids, which is brilliant. Um, and he heals back droids, so he can access the healer in a team indirectly um, through his unique, as well as through the Reign of Destiny. Now, how do you want him? Speed and health. Pretty much everybody who's anybody has four speed, two health set on him. Average speed, about 300. Mine's a little slower than that, but about 300 is what you'd be aiming for. It matters more than resistance team because you don't get that speed buff that he gets for droids in his team. Characters are very rarely droids in most lineups that we would like to use. No C3PO, no R2D2, usually. So you need the flat speed to get going until you get Cobra Data Transfer going, the secret intel going, and then you start getting more turns. Now, if I just go over to squads, here's a list I prepared earlier, which is of teams that I and the general public, I suppose, use BBA for. Now, the first one most of you won't necessarily be able to want to use him for because you don't have GL right, but it's fine. But just to be clear, that is probably his best flat out use um, if you if you if you haven't got uh, Ben Solo. Put him in that team, he buffs Ray, he buffs J Training Ray, he buffs the Finn Bros, he's great, he gives 10 meter, he'll make them hit real hard. It's great, and he'll keep the 10 meter chain going. More likely though, you'll be using him with J Training Ray if you can use him with resistance. And as you can see, I have pretty much all the resistance characters uh, highly reliced. Uh, you can either do it with Jedi Training Ray, Finn, Poe, R2D2. Now, R2D2 is good because he gets the assists from Roll the Punches, plus, he also gets um, the ability to put one character uh, with foresight. So, if you put on BB8, of course, and he has Dodge, he'll heal up R2D2 and BB8 himself, plus, the rest of the team will be stealth. So, it makes him a kind of de facto tank, if you will. RTD2 also has number crunch, which buffs resistance characters, their base stats, very nice. And he does a burning attack, which puts exposed. And as you may or may not know by the kid of Jenny Ray, Jenny Training Ray, she loves exposes, which sounds much more dodgy than it should do. On the upside, if you want to use a plot flat out tank rather than using RTD2 or use RT somewhere else, you can use Holdo or Finn. Now I prefer to use Holdo because Finn, I can prefer to fit him with. Uh, Rose and Story Bliss and a different team over there. Um, and to be honest, I'm usually using the Finn Bros with my my, my GL Ray, right? So as my old Jedi Train Ray. So normally I kind of split them in a different way anyway. Um, but if you want to, you can very easily stick in Finn or Holdo. I think Finn uh, works probably slightly better, but is more useful as a leader. Holdo puts force on herself again. That's quite nice. Force that's always a good thing. Uh, for a tank and she does do heals on her special again very nice on so her basic of variety she puts foresight on a random resistance character so if it's bb8 again he can heal which is very nice uh finn on the other hand uh does a heal on his special uh stuns with his ultimate so he does a bit more damage i guess which is good but you know it's much very much i would say from our point of view these teams can kind of so obviously ray jennifer gl ray i should say can beat most teams in the game they're, they're, you can't beat vader i guess um she beats kylo she beats Jedi Master Luke. She beats Jedi Master Kenobi if she's the right team. Um, can she beat Jabba the Hutt? I don't think she can beat Jabba the Hutt actually now, I think, right? but she can beat Palpatine too quite easily. So maybe Vader and Jabba she might struggle with, but the other GLs and the rest of the 
the entire rush of the game. She can be, of course, she's susceptible to Star Killer. If you're on defense and you know what you're doing, but that is a different story for a different video. Now, J Training Ray, on the other hand, her best usage has always been bounty hunters. It's almost always been great because she can put exposures out there. Um, and she can stun people. She can ability block Bosk. If you've got a fast and you're running a Bosk bounty hunter team, she can stop him dead, right? In one hand wave. Um, but to be honest, with the Finn Bros there, you can beat a lot of mid-range teams out there. One of them. However, DBA is the topic of conversation and he does have a couple of uses. The first of which is the Grievous Nuke team. Now, my Grievous Nuke team is not the best. I normally don't use Probe Droid uh, and TGM4 because mine are a bit low, so I sometimes use B2. Um, to put on target lock and buff immunity with his special um, and I sometimes put in um, B1 because B1 can at least heal back B2 and Grievous plus he gets the assists when people get hit however this team works predominantly on target lock and on the ability of Grievous to go boom IG-88's lead puts out target lock plus his AoE gives target lock and and his kid if you get the zeta if i remember it's the zeta it says if you get target lock you have healing immunity on a character who has target lock that's great probe droid on his special can inflict target lock and climb the buffs again more target lock in like really locked in t3 m4 and bb8 on the hand can put buffs on the team and they can beat up the team they can start the team t3 m4 can also put negative status effects in the, the the opponent in team uh, exposes one well, if I remember correctly, and all of these four basically are just there to make Grievous hit harder, especially when they die. Because obviously Grievous still does the whole marking a droid because it's a droid, not a separate droid, it's just a droid. So he just marks another droid each time someone else gets killed, and he doesn't care. He goes nuclear every time. Plus, of course, prop droid can blow up once it goes below 100% health. Um, plus, of course, um, eliminate destiny plus Grievous. Is a bad time uh, for the other team. He can beat Darth Revan. Re he can beat Relic Seven, Darth Revan, and Darth Malak, and Bastila Shan Form. He can beat a whole bunch of middle teams. It's that kind of like hail mary situation where you're, if you're kind of struggling, Grievous can come out of the woodwork and just kind of blow up half the team, even just to break the opponent, so that you can then clean them up uh, piecewise. Now. The last team on the list. This is the one I don't use, right? As you can probably tell already, because I have Shorty at seven star. That's how you pronounce Shorty. Um, but BB-8 also works really, really well with Shorty. Again, it's a droid thing, right? It's always a droid thing. In that he BB-8 gets turn meter from having droids, plus heals when dodges attack all droids, both health and protection, plus enemy of destiny for all buffs, for all droids, plus um, counter attack. And get some assists because you've got RTG2. He's a resistance character, and I think you're rally it specifically says it must be resistance based character for the uh, counter attack assists. So, BB8 in this team works really nicely and just can be a real jerk because if you get stuck behind BB8 uh, because the others are under stealth or you've got L337 in the stealth, uh, so you're uh, taunting the rest in the stealth, you, they can make it real difficult and it's really hard to get through shorty, especially when. Um, Shorty's constantly pumping out um, more and more uh, health protection in the team, especially on SL. But, I'm not going to show you footage today, just want to make it very short and read to the point. BB8 is an incredibly useful character, uh, very well working, fits in a lot of places in the roster, helps whenever you're a droid, that kind of Hail Mary situation, especially with Grievous, but it could be with Shorty too if you want a thick team on defense to annoy the opponents. Um, works with pretty much every resistance character in the game. Wonderful character, very easy to gear, and almost as easy to unlock. So, like, subscribe, and I'll be back tomorrow.